was it just not getting on him early enough or what did you see was the main issue? I thought he made some tough plays early. Um, I thought the double teams were effective in general to start the game. Um, you know, th their level of physicality on both ends. Um, you know, I thought they were more uh, physical and a little bit more desperate than us at times. Um, I think he got away with uh, some easy looks in the second quarter, you know, third and obviously late in the game that uh, just kind of snowballed. But uh, he's a really good player. And I thought uh, to begin the game, I thought we were decent. Um, but, you know, we're going to find a way to, you know, match those elite players. Uh, if, if we're going to be competitive, you know, and, and really think down the line, the playoffs, and that's what we're going to see. So we have to be, uh, be ready for that, understand what's coming and uh, plan accordingly. I think it's, uh, it's the mindset, but also well, from an individual basis, being able to step up and accept that challenge. What do you say to Trez after he gets himself tossed, if anything? I, understand I, the frustration. I don't, uh, yeah, of course I understand the frustration. Um, I'm not going to comment necessarily on why he got tossed. I don't know what he said. Um, but, you know, obviously level heads have to prevail in, the, in that situation. Um, and it happens. It's a heat of the moment reaction. He, he got tossed and, you know, you have to go on. But I think he understands that, you know, his value. And you know, we would prefer to have him in the game and on the floor. Uh, what do you show to Gaff after, without having watched the film, but afterwards just to say, hey, I, I know you're obviously overmatched here, but here's some kind of little things that you can do. Well, I just think it's um, it's a learning experience. You know, it, he's he's still a very young player, and he, he's going to have to figure that out. And some of it is just technique, or just kind of being ahead of the play and understanding what's, co what's coming. Um, learn to play angles, not give up, you know, certain things on the, on the defensive end. Um but he'll, he'll get it, you know, and I think that'll help him, you know, defend without fouling, be a step ahead of the play, and maybe give himself a better chance to absorb some of the contact that, that's given. Coach, how did they how did they start to take control of the game in the second quarter? What? what... Well, I think, you know, second quarter, um, you know, they, they started, I think it was a uh, it'll run. Um, we, we fought back in that second quarter to kind of narrow it a bit. It was really the third quarter you know, a 15-4 run the first six minutes. And that's where the, kind of the game got away from us. Um, combination of missing some of those shots. Some were decent, some were not. Um, you know, I think once again, they put a lot of pressure on us to uh, be in the right spots, initiate our offense, our setups. They, they're going to try and blow through things and, and make it tough. And, you know, at, at times we didn't handle it well. Um, they played like they were the more desperate of the, of the two teams. So... Um, you know, hopefully it's just a, you know, minor setback, but, you know, we can try and get right as we go on the road. I know this is not a, a sport of excuses. There's no such thing, uh, but how tough was it to, to cobble together a playing rotation with, with three people plus three people out through the yeah, I mean, it's, plus two others? It's not easy, but, you know, once again, everybody's going through it. We're not the only team that's uh, been affected with COVID absences or injuries or um, illnesses of any kind. So, you know, that being the case, we still had to find a way to put forth a better effort, you know, and it wasn't for, you know, beyond that first quarter, you know, I thought we got away from our, got away from ourselves a bit, you know, and we stopped playing for each other, got a little selfish, the ball started to stagnate a little bit. Um, you know, we paid the price for it. You know, I think it's, it's one thing to just look at the defensive end. I think it was, you know, both ends tonight. Wes, uh, Corey got another start tonight. I think he led you guys in, in time on the floor. What did you see from him, and where is there still room to grow for him, you know, kind of as he evolves? In yeah, I mean, I thought he, he, he did the right things. He, he wound up getting some of the same looks he made the other night in New York. He just didn't make them tonight. So um, I don't want him to lose faith or lose confidence because um, we need him. And I think he's uh, mature and self-aware that, you know, he'll – He'll find a way to bounce back, uh, but I'm not concerned with the misses, missing of the shots. Uh, the missing of defensive assignments, yes, that's concerning. Um, some coverage confusion. Well, we showed some of that at halftime where you know, I think it's just a lack of communication. Um, he's been in some of those same clips, you know, at times, and he's just got to show a level more consistency when it comes to that. But aside from the offense, I'm not worried about that. He'll make shots. Um, let's clean up the other end. In going back to the COVID protocol stuff, I mean, you mentioned there's three guys out. It's kind of tough. Can you plan for contingencies like that? Do you keep that in the back of your mind? Okay, if this guy goes out, sure. this is what we can do. How, how, how difficult is that to manage? Well, it's, it's not easy. But, you know, once again, that, that everybody's had to do it. 
and, and or will have to do it at some point during the season. Um, you know, our depth has been great for us at times, and it's, it's one of some games. So I think we have enough. And, of course, it's not ideal not to have your, your, your main guy or, you know, some starters in the rotation. Um, but you know, we've found a way to step up some nights, and we have to continue to do that until those guys get back. Given that you're relatively short on, on people, is there a chance that Rui will play – uh, Tuesday night in Miami? Uh, doubtful, in, in my opinion, right now. Um, we'll see how tomorrow goes, but I, I'm not going to press that issue. I think you know, when it's when it's time, it'll be time. All right, Coach, we'll switch over to Zoom for some questions. We'll start with Chase. Hey, Wes. Um, you talked about Joel Embiid and what made him tough. Um, what made Tobias Harris uh, difficult to guard? Some I think in general, his – his level of physicality. Um, he just kind of put his head down and played through us at times. Um, you, you know, and he's, he's a tough player. Um, made some tough finishes. Um, I think we, that we, we got a little discouraged with that, where, you know, even when, when it was, you know, quality defense and he makes a tough shot versus good defense, I think it's deflating, uh, especially if we're not getting a payoff on the other end. Um, but that's where we just have to show that mental um, maturity to, to handle it. To, to All right, next possession. I got to defend him even better next time. Um, we got frustrated. You mentioned uh, the ball kind of stagnating after the first quarter, I think. Um, not not your guys' best shooting night. Was, was it as simple as that, is why they were able to hold the percentage just so low? Uh, some of it was that, and some of it was their defense. I'll, I'll give them credit. They, they they were the more physical of the two teams. They got into us. They pushed us around at times. Um, they're going to try and blow through screens and make life difficult. They did that. Um, and that's where we have to do a better job of with our setups of owning only our spots um, and, and accepting that challenge. The, the teams are going to try and get into you. Well, you know, how do you respond? At times we were on our heels and I think that affected our offense uh, some, to some degree. Wayne. Hey, you know, coach, this team likes to stretch the floor, shoot the ball. Um, what, what makes it so difficult with a team like Philly? Uh, that, that likes to control that type of thing. Well, you know the you know where the ball is going to go. <laughs> going to play through Joel, and you know the, you're going to have to react to him. Um, he he garners so much attention. He's going to open up a lot of looks for the those perimeter players. Um, so he got it going. And I, you know, once again, I thought the double teams early were moderately effective. Um, you know, it's tough when a guy faces up. He's at 18 feet. And, you know, is that a post up? Is that a face up or an ISO? Um, but you got to find a way to kind of take something, you know, out of the equation, make him feel uncomfortable. You know, they, they made us feel uncomfortable on the other end. And uh, I thought we, they, we allowed them to play with some level of, of ease. Also, Coach, with the circumstances with the COVID protocols, and you said it before, getting NBA floor time is crucial. Can you see the confidence in Joel and Isaiah, Corey, uh, guys, um, Jordan, guys of those natures? Well, I think, that, you know, the more minutes, you know, I've made this point before, the more game minutes they can log, the better. Um, because you can't simulate, you know, that environment in practice. So it's, in the end, it does pay off. You know, it's, it's not ideal. And they might not have immediate success, but, you know, they'll, they'll be better for it. You know, I think that's important to get those minutes when they can, uh, whether it's a, you know, 20-point loss or 20-point blowout, you know, or we're, when we're up. If there's an opportunity to get those guys on the floor, the, the experience is, is, is invaluable, um, you know, and, and hopefully they can take something from that. But, well, you know, we need them, you know, and, and the sooner they can kind of grow in that area and, uh, you know, help us, I think that it'll be, it'll be beneficial for us. What happened there when you uh, got tossed, Chris? I don't know. You got to ask the ref, man. You know, it's flow throughout basketball, man. It's a flow throughout the play of the game, man. But, you know, the guy's going to – Go along with the, I don't know what to call it, taunting or, you know, the extra, extra curriculum after, you know, then it, it, it's cool for a response to come after. It's simple as that. Um, yeah, he got a good offensive rebound. He got an N1, bro. And it's cool with the N1, bro, but you don't yell that in my face, bro. I ain't one of them guys, man. So it is what it is, man. I don't want to change it no differently from what I did um, on neither emphasis, you know, both texts. Um, I stand on both of them, and I don't feel like I did nothing wrong. Simple as that. That's, that's going to be my next question. Like, genuinely wondering, do you regret when you get tossed, or is nope. it important of, like, nope. 
pride. Nope, nope. I don't get. I don't regret not one minute, man. Because at the end of the day, the double tail was called like how it was supposed to be called. You feel me? At the end of the day, um, but we gonna you know Nick pick about every little rule, you know, taunting and all that, I and mean, then let it go both ways. You feel me? He got an M one. He wanted to yell in my face and stuff like that. I pushed him on my face. That was in there. You feel me? He the one wanting to step back at point. Oh, I got pushed. Like, stand, stand on your toughness, bro. If you're so tough and you're so, you know, stand on that, my dude. Don't, don't, don't start, you know, nitpicking and pointing and want to do the telling when the ref walk in. My guy, stand on that. Cause as you see, I'm, mean, I am. I got tossed. I mean, it is what it is. I wish it wouldn't have been in the situation that it was in, but I don't regret it. I don't want to take it back. It is what it is, bro. And I'm not gonna change how I play for nobody, man. I'm not going to back down for nobody, man. I don't care about none of that rule out talking and all that, man. It's talk. It's talk. Simple as that. Aside from that, what, how did, I guess, MB get going so early? Like, what could you guys have done, done different to make him just more uncomfortable? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, he got comfortable. I mean, he started, uh, you know, getting far early on. Um, we knew that was going to go to him early. And um, once a player get like that gets comfortable, he gets a high volume of shots um, up the floor where he's uh, posting, he's dribbling down into his own assets and things like that, man. It's going to be hard to cut anybody off in that caliber, man. So at the end of the day, like you said, he got comfortable, you know, and, and once that set in, um, the basket just looked even bigger. And at the same time, man, the guy's seven foot and he's dribbling the ball up, posting uh, from the three-point line, starting his action from there too, man. So... Um, at the end of the day, man, you don't make no excuses. You don't cry about it. At the end of the day, man, we like I said, we just let them get too comfortable. I feel like our defense was um, intensity was definitely higher in the first two quarters, and then we came out in the third quarter and kind of relaxed, and, you know, they jumped on us. Simple as that. You just alluded to this. How, how did they take control of this game? Um, we stopped guarding, I think. You know, I think once uh, we didn't make shots how we was making them uh, in the first half, it kind of started to dawn on guys, and then we started missing our assignments on the defensive end of the floor. Um, and, you know, I, I just, what I want that, I really want to, us to understand, like, we can't do that. Like, we got to play defense no matter what, and whether we're making shots, um, whether we're not making shots, man, we can't really hang our defensive hat on how we're playing offense in the floor. So I just think once we didn't hit shots um, early on in the third quarter early, um, or we did get good shots and they just, you know, rimmed in and out or whatever it may be, we stopped guarding. And, you know, you can't do that. Um, with a team with two high caliber players, um, you know, again, um, a rhythm. Uh, now it wasn't only Joel and B, uh, Tobias started to get comfortable on certain aspects where he started making, you know, doubles had to come that was supposed to him as well. So really, I just feel like, um, you know, once our shots didn't start going in or, you know, they didn't start falling, we stopped guarding. Because obviously you're a super physical player, but how long did it take you to kind of learn the angles game and stuff like that when you're going up against a, a seven footer? Um, I mean, I don't know, honestly, because I don't really think I still learned those things, man, because at the end of the day, I'm not going no more. <laughs> at the end of the day, my height is my height, man. So, I mean, you're throwing it down to a guy who has three inches over me. Um, yeah, the physical part is, yeah, I'm still standing in there. I'm not, you know, being easily moved or anything like that. But at the end of the day, when you turn around and go shoot, I'm still giving up three inches. So, you know, and at the same time, it's a little bit tougher when you got a guy who tries to use, you know, every little answer to get a foul call, you know, hand swipes uh, like James Harden and stuff like that, man, which I thought we was taking out the game. But, you know, neither here nor there. Um, you got to play the, the defense solid, simple as that. You got to sit down and guard. Um, and like like I said earlier, he just got too comfortable early on, man. Um, I think he was up to double digits before the half even hit, man. And I, I feel like with any player like that, um, you know, getting the ball on, uh, you know, numerous amount of reps and stuff like that, man. They're just starting, they're just starting to feel comfortable and the backs are just get bigger and bigger. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, it was in beat. So, you know, they were dumbing it down to him. He's the best player. They were, they were giving him touches. Uh, we obviously were doubling and, and he still had basically 40. Um, but also off the double, that's what frees up, you know, the other guys driving lanes, things like that. Because obviously you have to rotate off the backside. So, you know, uh, it, was a, it was a very dominant performance. That's just kind of the key for you guys as guys obviously off ball when you have to think about okay we're gonna see big guys like this down the road in the playoffs things like things like that like what do you think about how can I help this in the future? Um, yeah I mean we just have to have our rotations tight because uh, if we double we have to make sure the rotations are good um, the other thing we have to try to do is not foul obviously because 
you know, uh, when they went on that run, like, you know, they're, they're not great in transition defense, um, which we kind of got into in the first half. Um, when they went on that run in the third quarter, you know, we were taking the ball to net every single time, either a foul or, you know, a layup or a made shot or whatever it was. So, you know, it kind of uh, slowed us way down from how we were playing in the first half. And they were able to kind of, you know, take control of the game. I think a lot of guys with all the COVID stuff and it's changing every day, it's just like next man up mentality, but how difficult is it to really lock into that? Like as someone who's doing it for the first time this year and having yeah. to kind of keep up with it day to day, is it an easy thing for you to just say like, okay, whatever, nothing changes for me. I mean, I don't think it's easy. Um, Cause obviously uh, with every person out or every person in, uh, styles of play roles everything changes but at the end of the day i mean we're professionals we get we get paid to do this and you know it's on, not on us to complain like we gotta you know continue to figure it out so very much so is it it's in it is what it is type of mentality but no it's also not easy what adjustments did you have to make tonight do you think in, in our uh you mean like with how now and stuff like that oh i mean obviously that that's more of a you know, coach adjusting the rotations and doing what he needs to do so that, uh, you know, we can put our best foot forward tonight. I mean, again, though, like we just, we didn't stop uh, Joel, not even a little bit. So, you know, uh, and then obviously Trez getting ejected also hurts our team because he's, you know, in a lot of ways a heart and soul too. So, you know, all those, all those facts combined. How much of their physicality and not just Joel's uh, impact the game? Yeah. No, I mean, um, they're, they're a good ball club. Obviously they, they played, uh, you know, playoff basketball. Um, I was telling somebody on the bench, it's kind of like, uh, if you remember the Seahawks like five years ago, six years ago when they were Legion of Boom, they're like, yeah, we hold every play. Like they can only call so much stuff like that. Like you gotta respect it. That's a play style. Like it, again, that's another, it is what it is thing. Um, you know, I, I mean, we did get them in foul trouble to a certain extent. Um, in a lot of ways we got to convert our free throws. We got to continue to play, but at the end of the day, like, you know, if we were able to get them in transition, like kind of a clash of styles, right? If we were able to get stops and get them in transition, we probably win. But with them, you know, scoring every time and, and breaking up the rhythm and keeping the, the pace to their liking, like, that's why we lost. All right, Spence, we'll hop over to Zoom. We'll take a question from Neil. Hey, Spence. When, you know, guys are going out with protocols, you know, Brad, a few days after KCP, Howell, you know, today, does anything cross in your head? Like, dang, like I was around these guys, like, am I next? Or do you kind of just try not to think about it? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I had COVID before. Uh, it wasn't a pleasant experience. Uh, you know, I definitely don't want to have it again, at least not, I guess, the way that I did have it. But, you know, again, like, we, you can't live life in fear, right? Like we got, we got a job to do. Like we got to continue to come here and like try to do like our job. So that's another factor, right? It's not easy. Um, it would suck to obviously get sick, of course, but you know, when we step on that floor, like we're, we're trying to just win the game. Like that's, that's really the, the only thing.